Okay, so this is gonna be my recap of Ailish Grace part two. So um, Mrs. Mrs. Humphreys is going through some domestic, having some domestic issues. She runs the boarding house where Dr. Jordan is staying. Um, she came in one morning to bring him her, his breakfast and she ends up collapsing in the floor. So when she was able to bring her to, she, he, she told him that her husband basically ran out on her and took every, you know, dime that they had. And, you know, she hadn't eaten in days because, you know, she was, Prepare, she was preparing food for him so she the food that they had she was feeding to him because he was her uh, boarder he was paying for room and board and obviously food my husband took all of our money two days ago i do not know where he is gone and so he basically told her he would advance her for two months and that should help out for a time until she figured out what her you know what her next move was going to be and so she ends up grabbing his hand and kissing his hand in some weird way and you could clearly say that miss clearly see that mrs humphrey has a thing for dr jordan so now uh, Dr. Jordan is with Grace. They're having their third session. And he ended up asking her about her dreams. And uh, she paused for a minute and there was this brief clip of Mrs. Um, Nancy Montgomery. And she was like, pick, you know, um, uh, picking flowers. And then all of a sudden she collapsed. And then of course, Grace said, no, she, you know, she never dreams. but she would try to try to remember her dreams if it would help him with his troubles. I will try to remember them if it will help you, sir, with the trouble you're in. And of course he looked confused and he's like, what, what, what do you mean by troubles? It makes you think I'm in trouble, Grace. And she said a person who's been in trouble can always recognize a person who's having troubles. Those who have been in trouble themselves are alert to it and others, sir. And so he moved on and started asking her about Mary. And so they get back to the house and Mary and uh, Grace are in the bedroom and they're uh, this old wife's tale that Mary was telling her about that if you cut the uh, apple peel in one in one uh, part and you throw it over your shoulder, whatever letter it makes, that's going to be the first the initial of your husband. There's no way to tell which way, huh? Yes, there, look. A J. And so Grace does it in the letter J. And she kind of was teasing her about this. Pan the panhandle that comes to the house from time to time, but like, you know, bow rats and jewelry and cloth and stuff like that that they buy from um, named Jeremiah and then of course Mary tried to do it and she just couldn't do it and so you can see she was kind of it was like this concerned look on her face like oh well maybe that means that I'm never going to um, get married and so later that night for some strange reason Grace woke up and she kind of turned over and you can see that Grace uh, Mary is laying there with her eyes wide open like she was deep in thought like she was concerned about something So the next day, Jeremiah arrives and he lays eyes on Grace for the first time. You can already tell he was in love with her, love at first sight for her, for him. Come, what have you brought us? We need to make a new woman of our Grace here. Come, let's all go inside. And so um, she had bought a couple of things. She had bought four buttons and then he was going to give her the fifth button because he said five buttons means good luck. And so when he looked at her palm, he looked concerned and basically told her that trouble that there was going to be some trouble ahead but you know that she would be fine in the end you will cross water three times you will have much trouble but all will be fine in the end and so of course she kind of brushed it off and she went back to her chores and so um the next morning she wakes up and she starts her cycle of course her mother never got around to talking to her about this for some reason because she was a teenager at this point Watch the child wait the whole house <laughs> Uh, Mary ends up helping her through it and explaining things to her and um, basically handled the situation the way that it should you know should be should have been handled so uh, so later that day we are introduced to George Parkinson he is one of the sons of the Parkinson's and he's home for the holidays this is around Christmas time and he introduces himself to Grace Mary sir pardon me I just wanted to introduce myself to the young lady I'm George Parkinson and then he uh, said, I hope that Mary is making you feel at home. She's good at doing that. And you could tell by the way that Mary was looking at him that there was more between them than um, there was something between them. Grace Mark, sir. Mary, have you been making Grace feel right at home? I certainly have, sir. I'm sure you have. And um, later that night, they were having Christmas dinner and... Uh, 
Mary went to pick up his plate and you can kind of see the way he was looking at her and his mother actually caught this interaction and you could tell that she felt some kind of way. Shortly after that, something was going on with Mary where she was kind of short tempered and she just wasn't her normal jovial self. And so one night she came to bed late and Mary asked her like, well, you know, well, what happened? We usually have our, you know, our talks before um, we go to bed. And she basically told her that she didn't feel like talking and that she um, was tired. And so she just went on to sleep. I'm tired, Grace. I must go right to sleep. And so later that day during the chores, Mary got sick. And Grace obviously knew what was going on with her. But Mary did not say she just basically said that she thinks that she may have eaten something and didn't agree with her. Later that night, she's still sick throwing up in the room. And uh, Grace ended up telling her, like, I know that there's something weighing on you. You have the same symptoms as my mother. Grace is the oldest of like five or six kids. And so she has seen her mother pregnant a number of times. And she's familiar, you know, aware of the symptoms. And so... Uh, Grace, uh, Mary ends up saying he promised that he would marry me. And so obviously we, you know, know that yes, of course, in fact, she is um, with child. He promised to marry me. And uh, when Grace asked her who it was, she wouldn't say. So um, Grace was like, well, maybe you need to try one more time. This is the morning. Maybe you should try one more time to go and talk to him. So she went to go and talk to him again. She came back pissed because he gave her basically told, gave her five dollars and told her to go drown herself. He gave me five dollars. Five dollars that is what his child is worth to him. So now she realizes she is kind of up the creek now um, without a paddle. And so she made a decision to um, terminate her pregnancy. And so of course during that time it was back alley butchers and that's exactly that's where she went. And it was horrific. So, uh, Grace ends up helping, get, getting her home and getting her into bed. And of course, Grace has to go back because she has to do her chores for the day. And she went, you know, later at night she went to her room and, you know, she wanted to make sure that, uh, Mary was okay. And so she decided she would sleep on the floor so that Mary can have the whole bed. Cause you know, all them t rough, you know, turn and twist and it, it's going to be irritating to, um, to Mary. And so she did. So unfortunately the morning, the following morning she woke up and Mary had passed away. Uh, she may have had some inf infection. There was a lot of blood loss and she she didn't make it. And so um, at this time, the other uh, maids, they were trying to figure out what was taking them so long to come down. So they, two of them went up to see and then they saw Mary and they went and got uh, I guess the head mistress or maid and uh, and uh, Mrs. Parkinson, they saw her and um, they immediately got busy trying to clean her up and get her, make her presentable. And um, initially, Mrs. Parkinson was like, whoever, the, who was the father? And he basically, he needed to be strung up by his toes. And then Grace ended up saying, well, she never said who the father was. Um, but she did say that if you ever found out that she would be upset. And at the point she realized it was her son. Only she said that you would not like it at all if you found out who it was. So obviously all her rah rah, we need to, you know, string him up and drag him, you know, quarter him, uh, uh, with some, you know, between four horses, something that all went on out the window. And so, um, she, after they get that all situated, she tries to carry on with her chores. Eventually she's working and she passed, she just collapsed. And so they got her in the room. They are having, she is, was just not waking up. It's time to wake up now. And um, she um, eventually did wake up, but she was kind of disoriented. She didn't think, she thought she was ma uh, Mary and uh, they trying to convince her that she was Grace and she kind of, she was just out of it. What happened? Where is Grace? You are Grace. You are Grace. Mary has died. And so she ended up passing out again. This time she had passed, she was out for like a, a whole day. And so she, when she came to the second time, she realized who she was and she realized that Mary had, uh, Mary had died. When I woke again, it was a day later. And I knew again that I was Grace and that Mary was dead. And around this time, Mrs. Lydia, who interrupted their session before, interrupted them again. And you can see that uh, Dr. Jordan was visibly annoyed. Basically, no, we're good. Thank you. You can close the door now. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you don't need anything. No, no, we don't need anything. Please close the door. And but of course, it 
disrupts the flow of the conversation. And at that point, the session was ended. And that is pretty much how this episode ends.